if you look on here, by the way, before you look on there, hey, you people have been so nice to me. I mean, really nice. You worked well in the lab, and you've done nice in the class. You're learning organic chemistry. Take next week off. <laughs> and in case you forgot, spring break is next week. I hope you have a good time wherever you're going. If you're going somewhere nice, send me a postcard or wherever that is. You know, write something good on there. Having a good time, glad you're not here. <laughs> you know, just like that. But anyways, next week will be spring break. I hope you all have a nice spring break. I've already got a big list of things to do around the house and also some of my personal projects. Now, I've already gone through this, but a little review never hurts. I've got the time today. And that is, we're talking about esters. And back up one slide. Actually, two slides. Three slides. I like you. And we're talking about esters, but first, do that. Ester carbonyl <coughs> with oxygen with carbons and carbonyl with carbons ester. How do you make it? Fischer esterification. What happens? You start with a carboxylic acid, react it with an alcohol, replace the hydrox group with the OR from the alcohol. start you off right at the beginning of class with a fun thing to do. What would be the organic product or products or the following? Serious organic chemistry. Something you just learned a day or so ago. Here I show you general reaction and say, all right, go apply it. And you can. Doesn't that feel good? Like you're proud of yourself, everyone. All right, let's have some fun with this because I think everybody's done. Look up here. Ooh, a benzene ring. Does anybody know about a reaction of benzene ring with an alcohol and acid? Because I don't. Therefore, this is carbon. Carbonyl hydroxyl group, carboxylic acid. So I'm going to call this R. What's different here? Carbon with a hydroxyl group, alcohol. And I'm call this R prime. And now, what do you get? An ester. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon, because that's where the fun always happens. And that's what I'm going to draw first, this carbonyl. What's attached to it? An oxygen. What's attached to the carbonyl? You don't break carbon-carbon. 
single bond, so I'm still going to have a benzene ring. And then what's my R prime? Three carbons, isopropyl. The carbon with the hydroxyl group will be the carbon bonded to this oxygen. So that's the center of three. And you've made isopropyl benzoate. Luckily on my test, I don't ask you to give the product and then name it. I had a teacher who did that. It was challenging. Talked about lactose. <coughs> and then yesterday, near the end of the class, we were doing acid hydrolysis of esters. This is an extremely important reaction because once you have an ester, Mother Nature created the following. If you take an ester, react it with acid and water, you get back the carbon salt acid plus the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. And why is this so important? And we'll be coming back to it later in the semester. And it's important because all fats and oils are esters. And when you eat something with a fat or oil in it, like if you had anything today with butter on it, cream cheese for breakfast, say, or if you had bacon or other things with fats or oils in it, after you chew it and swallow it, it goes in your stomach. Now I'm way beyond my level of expertise, but the acid present in your stomach, which is amazing, microchloric acid, but that's still A+, plus, breaks down the fats and oils by the body reaction. Remember, carbon with the hydroxyl oxygen here, and R prime will be the carbon that has the hydroxyl there. Why don't you try this one? Because we've already gone through this initially yesterday. So I'll let you try it now. <coughs> and remember, during spring break, if you happen to be by some flowers and smell them, or it happened to be in a forest shop, remember you're smelling esters. I just looked around the class and passed another quiz. back from break, when we finish the main analyst chapter, I'll have a very special announcement to make. I think put a smile on it. I think everybody's face is up. All right, let's take a look at this. What's different? What functional group are we dealing with? Two oxygens, they got my attention like that. Same carbon, carbon double block to oxygen, carbonyl, oxygen with carbons, right here, carbons here, ester. I'm going to call this R. I'm going to call this R prime. You can do it the other way, but it's still known as attached to. And I'm going to keep my eye on the carbonyl carbon because that's where the fun happens. And the first thing I get, I'm going to write down this carboxylic acid. What's R? 
Do brakes are in carbon single bonds? No. So I have one, two, three, four carbons like that. I have that carbon silicic acid. Let me clean it up a little. That looks better. And next, what will be my alcohol, R prime, three carbons? Which carbon has the oxygen here, the end one? So the end carbon of three carbons will have the hydroxyl group. And that's how you do it. Now, as I mentioned before, test number three will be just like test number two. There'll be approximately 10 points general knowledge, approximately 35 points nomenclature, and approximately 60 points reactions. A couple of the reactions, three or four, will be synthesis. Now, the one thing to change, because Mother Nature provides so many esters that we can obtain, it's an easy way to make certain other chemicals like alcohols or carboxylic acids. So let's take a look at this. And the question would be, what would be the starting material to make these compounds? I'll do this one, then you know I'm going to share, but you have some fun too. But well, how do you do this? You look and say, what functional groups do these molecules have? What's different? This one has two oxygens. One is a hydrox group, the other is a double bond to the same carbon. Then I have carbons here, carbon slow acid. Hydroxyl group. Oxygen on a carbon, alcohol. And what do you react? Acid and water, H plus is an acid, to make that an ester. And therefore, my question mark starting material will be an ester. Well, which ester? Well, I come back here and say, on my carbonyl carbon of the carbon silk acid, that's R. On my alcohol, the carbon is attached to the hydroxyl group, I'll call R prime. And now, I can come over here and say, write the carbonyl. Don't forget Dr. White is biased, thinks carbonyls are the greatest thing in organic chemistry, because they are but I'm biased. And I have my oxygen. What's R? Two carbons. And what's R prime? Also two carbons. So if you're trying to make these molecules and you have this ester, you can. Now, when we get into fats and oils, I'll talk about a company I worked for here in the Chicagoland area for a number of years, and we did a variation of this reaction to make certain carboxylic acids and alcohols to the tune of about 3 million pounds a week. And you use those compounds, and we'll talk about it when you put fats and oils. By the way, something you can do, if when you get home, or if you have it with purse or backpack, if you look at any of your hand creams or other personal care items, if you see names on the ingredients list that end in A-T-E, like palmitate, oleate, stearate, those are esters, and I'll teach you later on when we get into fats and oils where they come from. And they're very useful, obviously, if you like your hand cream or air conditioner, shampoos, even bar soap. Those are all things. And 
question would be, what would be the starting material, or a material, in this case only starting material, to react with acid and water to make those two compounds? Acid and water. Everybody's just about done, so let's go ahead and look at this. And the question is, what would be the starting material? And if I look at this and I say, ooh, what's different? Carbonyl, hydroxyl group, carboxylic acid. Ooh, a six-member ring, but as it's carbon, hydroxyl group, alcohol. And I'm reacting with acid and water. The question would be, what would be the starting material? Ester. What's my R? Methyl. What's my R prime? This ring. And therefore, if I put this together, I can do the carbonyl first, and then the oxygen. On here, I have my methyl. Here, I have my six-membered ring. And I'm done. And that's how you do synthesis with this. And like I said, there are many companies in the United States, if not the world, that take esters that Mother Nature provides us and reacts them to make carboxylic acids and alcohols from that, which they use in, or sell to other companies, which use, they use in products you use in your daily life. And the fun thing is last third of the semester, coming up sooner, last quarter, going out into the real world more often, and you'll be learning where all those things come from and are, and are actually are going to. All right. Now, if you can react a ester with acid <coughs> catalyst, remember, a catalyst <coughs> excuse me, is only something that makes the reaction go quicker. It lowers the activation energy and is not consumed. So really, the key thing here is water is added to break up the ester to make, in this case, a carboxylic acid and alcohol. And this is acid catalyzed. There's another reaction that's called saponification of an ester. And as always, these general reactions, it's a key organic reaction. And it's used, why is it? To make soap. How many of you have used bar soap at home still? A number of you. The liquid soap I'll talk more about too, and I'll teach you later in the semester how that magic stuff soap gets your hands clean. Well, yeah, they're clean. Ah, no, no markers. But this was used sort of reaction by our four fathers and mothers to make soap. And in the colonial times and before that, I have to look on the internet soon, but I don't know for sure if the Romans and other people agree to have soap. We'll find it. I'll look on that this weekend. But anyways, what's this reaction? The reaction is taking an ester, reacting it with water again, but now the catalyst used is sodium hydroxide. And this is sometimes called ester base upon or uh, base hydrolysis of an ester, but usually it's just called saponification of an ester because one of the products for many, many eons, and still is, is the soap. In the company I worked for that made carboxylic acids, also made soaps, 
In fact, I had interactions. How many of you have ever heard of the company Neutrogena? And I worked with those people because they were a big customer of the company I worked for. And uh, talk more about their products. But I can tell you is, of all the companies I've worked with that bought our products, like Procter & Gamble, Lever Brothers, and Neutrogena, they always use the highest quality products, which is also why their products are also the highest priced. But they do sell, at least when I used to work, and I assume they still do, very high quality products. <laughs> Now, if you take an ester reactor with sodium hydroxide and water, you can also use potassium hydroxide. You can use other bases. I'm going to stick either sodium hydroxide, NaOH, or potassium hydroxide would be KOH. And what happens is you get the, not the carboxylic acid, but the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that ester, plus the alcohol you would have used to make that alcohol. Uh, ester. Similar to what you do with acid hydrolysis, but you don't get the carboxylic acid, you get the carboxylate anion. Why does that happen? Well, let's look underneath, and I'm going to write what I'll call the mechanism, or a mini mechanism. You don't have to know this, but I'll explain why you get that. If you react this with sodium hydroxide and water, you usually have to heat it up. You'll get the carboxylic acid used to make that ester plus the alcohol. Now, if you notice, I have that in brackets. Whenever an organic chemist puts a structure in brackets in a reaction, that means you cannot isolate it. Why can't you isolate it? Because a carboxylic acid is an acid. If there's any base around in this reaction, there will be sodium hydroxide. This happens. This is a straight acid-base reaction. So with the sodium hydroxide <coughs> present, this will immediately react. How immediately? There's no faster reaction in all of, excuse me, all of organic <coughs> chemistry than an acid-base reaction. It's called diffusion control. What that means, as soon as the molecules come together and touch, they react. Usually that takes less than a nanosecond, a billionth of a second. So as soon as this is formed, there's going to be this around, this happens, therefore you get this, not the carboxylic acid. Listen closely. If you put the carboxylic acid down instead of this on a test, I will mark it wrong every time. If you say, shouldn't I get partial credit? I'll tell you no, because in the presence of base, this happens immediately. Now, sometimes people in commercials use that effect erroneously, in other words, to trick you. How many of you have ever seen the commercials where they have somebody selling some cleaning product and it's got a, or she's got a big glass tank of liquid in there and it's cloudy? They say, look at our new product. Pour it in there and all of a sudden it goes clear instantly. See how well it works? Well, first of all, What's happening is nothing to do with cleaning. That's an acid-base reaction because nothing goes that quickly except the acid base. And acid-base reactions have nothing to do with cleaning. And the first time I saw that, I started laughing hard until I realized how many people are being fooled by that. And in marketing sales, and I work with marketing sales and companies I've worked at, we call that either a dog and pony show or this, you know, smoke and mirrors, usually smoke and mirrors, where you're trying to influence somebody to do something by saying something else that has no relationship to what you're trying to get them to buy. And they do that, unfortunately, a lot in commercials. All right, let's get back to organic chemistry. Sometimes I'll write it this way, sometimes I'll write it both on the board and on a test this way. Same thing with the ACS. 
all of these may react this with sodium hydroxide and water, you react this with sodium hydroxide and water, and the question is what do you get? And let's take a look at what are we dealing with, what's different? Oxygen should get your attention like that. Got mine, carbonyl, oxygen here. What do we have? Carbons here, carbons in an ester. Reacting with sodium hydroxide and water is potentiation of an ester. This is my R group. This is my R prime. What do we do? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. <coughs> Comes this carbon right here, still carbonyl. What's my R? Three carbons. And I get this carboxylate anion. I'm not the carboxylic acid because in the presence of base, you'll get that anion. And then, what else do you get? The alcohol, what's my R prime? Methyl. <coughs> and that's what you get. How many of you have ever heard of lye soap? Anybody here hear of lye soap? In one or two. Well, soap, when R is very long, the carboxylate anion, I'll teach you this later on, that's all soap is, bar soap, with a little fragrance and some coloring. And sodium hydroxide has the ancient old name of lye. And you can still go into some hardware stores and buy lye, which is really the sodium hydroxide. And they called it lye soap because you reacted something to make the soap and what you react lye in water, sodium hydroxide. And I'll teach you more about that when we get into that some more. So you have a lab today, don't forget to please be on time. Also, don't forget to have a long sleeve top or a lab coat. You notice I have one of my acid lab shirts on. product or products. Ooh, I haven't done this in a while. Pinch. But anyways, what do we have that's different? Carbonyl. Carbon. Don't want the oxygen. Oxygen here. Carbon's here and here. I have an ester. What am I reacting with? Sodium hydroxide water. What do you get? carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that ester, 
plus the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. What's our, my favorite, it's butyl group. What's our prime? Also one of my favorites, an isopropyl. And therefore, let's look at the carbonyl carbon. Comes this. What's attached to it? My R group. I have this carboxylic acid. What's our prime? Isopropyl. The carbon bond to the oxygen here will be the carbon that the hydroxyl group is on. Three carbons, seven carbon. And I have isopropyl alcohol. And that's what you get. Oh, we got to do another one. Wait, you must uh, <laughs> have a hydrogen. It's sodium. sodium. Yeah. Which one? Connected to the oxide, I'm not a carboxylic acid. Ah, I made a mistake. Well, there goes my perfect one. <laughs> Hold on. Add Dr. White. Thank you for finding me that error. But as I told you the first day of class, I don't walk on water. You're going to need a whole spring break to live that one down. In that case, I better redeem myself. Let's do another one. Remember, these reactions are used to make things you use in your daily life. up here slowly he turns each by you know anybody know what the three stooges were if not go to YouTube I think everything's on YouTube except my high school graduation all right let's take a look at this question is what's the organic product or products what do we have here Ooh, benzene ring but carbonyl oxygen carbons there this is carbons really so this is an ester Aromatic ester, that's still an ester. Base, but it's not sodium hydroxide, it's potassium hydroxide. And what are you going to get? And now the count cation is potassium, not sodium, but everything else is, as I told you, you get the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that, and you get the alcohol you would have used to make that. And now, what's our benzene ring? What's our prime methyl? <coughs> and now, if we look at this, R is a benzene ring. I have my carbonyl. Make sure I do this right. <coughs> you get that carboxylate anion. And you also are prime methyl. <coughs> I don't know if 
I told you this before. I think I might have, but in case I didn't, a number of years ago, pop companies which used sodium benzoate were instead of a potassium plus, that's the sodium, as a preservative in pop, they said, oh, we hear everybody saying we want low sodium products, so maybe we can sell some more products and you'll be happy with us. We'll offer low sodium pop. What they did is exchange some of the sodium benzoate with potassium benzoate, low sodium, and people didn't buy that. And if you go to the supermarket, I don't think you'll find it for sale anymore. All right. <clears throat> Let's move on. And now we're going to have some big time fun. Because you can react an ester. And I could see Dr. White was in full organic chemist mode when I made this slide. And I'll do something which I'll try and remember to do on the test, because organic chemists don't balance things, but I'll write the general reaction this way. take an ester, and what I forgot, actually I didn't forget because we don't balance things, but for you people I will, you take a reactor with two molecules or moles for Grignard reagent, and I'm really happy. Second step, acid water. You can make not one, but two carbon-carbon single bonds. And what you get back is, here's the carbonyl carbon, here comes this carbon, on the slide, I didn't put the two down there. We usually don't, but for this class, I will. You'll get this alcohol, and I'll show you why in a second. This gets eliminated or kicked out to form this alcohol. And you make two alcohols. Now, the key thing is that very simple reagents, you can make a very complex alcohol quickly. Now, how does this happen? Let's go through underneath step one and what happens is this is a nucleophile, carbonyl, slightly positive, slightly negative. This comes in, attacks that, kicks this out. form these two compounds. You get a ketone plus the carboxylate, alkoxylate of an alcohol, the conjugate base. And I'll show you later on, acid converts that to this. Now, this is a ketone, and you know what happens with a Grignard. <coughs> ketone reacts with a Grignard to make an alcohol. That's what happens here. The second step when you add acid, this becomes this alcohol. Again, what's underneath, you don't have to know, but students find it useful at times. But let's go through one of these. Don't forget X is any of the halogens, bromine, iodine, or chlorine. And the question would be, what's the organic product or products of the following? And before we do the reaction, notice I'm starting with a very simple ester, not many carbons, a very simple Grignard, and I did it again. Organic chemists really don't balance things when we don't have to. And what are you going to get? Keep your eye right here on the carbonyl carbon. That becomes this alcohol carbon. What's attached to it are, is still attached to it. 
Then what will be attached to it is not one, but two of the grid yard are triple prime. And the carbon that has the magnesium halide will be the carbon bond to this carbon here, which will be an alcohol. And notice I have two carbons from our triple prime. And then the other alcohol will come from this, which is our prime. When you're doing this reaction, you usually keep our prime small, because I'll make methanol, which I can distill out easily, and make this very complex alcohol. What do they use alcohols for? Complex ones especially, to make artificial flavors. Those of you in the lab today, you'll find out about that. And also to make esters that are used in perfumes. Next time you use or smell perfume, think about those are complex mixtures of esters. this one. What would be the product or products for the follow? For those of you who like to print out the notes when we come back, either to Monday or probably Monday, <coughs> part of the latest lecture, I'll start on the next chapter, Amines and their derivatives. Scenario worked in very heavily too. Boy, I worked in a lot of areas. What's different? Oxygen, carbonyl, oxygen with carbons, carbons on the carbonyl, ester. What am I reacting with? Two moles or molecules of a Grignard, second step, acid, water. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon, because that's where the fun is. And what's attached to it is still attached to it. This will become an alcohol, this carbon. And then you get to make not one, but two carbon-carbon single bonds. And then you'll get a second alcohol from this. And now all we have to do is say this is R. What's attached to the other oxygens, R prime. And my Grignard, our triple prime, how do you construct this? I'm going to start with the carbonyl carbon. Comes this carbon. I have a hydroxyl group, and whatever was attached to it, R is still attached to it. <coughs> then what's my R triple prime? Methyl. 
that's my first alcohol, and then from this part, this part, I get my second alcohol, which in this case I have a small molecule, ethanol, which I can easily distill out and get this purified. I can't think of an easy way other than this reaction to make that kind of alcohol or other alcohol. And that's the utility. All right, time for a small before the holiday break gift from Dr. White. And also a promise. I promise, it's my gift to you, I will never ever on my test put this as a synthesis problem. I think that would be cruel and yeah. punishment. As I still check, it's outlawed by the Supreme Court of the United States. So I won't. You know something, holiday break, I'm going to let you out a whole minute and 25 seconds early. Please don't tell the day. For those of you who are not going to be in lab, have a great spring break. For those of you who are going to be in lab, have a great spring break. Don't forget to study, work on the practice.